Good morning and thank you for joining us here at One Step at a Time Farmstead. I'm Lucas and I'm so excited to share our journey with you. And once again, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, I'm not really sure how many times I've started, you know, the first video. Um, and I never posted it because I just never felt that it was good enough or uh, professional enough or um, entertaining enough or scripted enough and also I would just think I wasn't confident enough sorry this camera is a bit skewed um, but anyway and I was thinking about it and I just decided you know the easiest way is to be completely transparent and approach this as a as a journal style vlog um, I'm still learning a lot I there's a lot of things that I don't know and um, like I said I'm not a professional actor or a professional farmer or a professional public person or anything of that I'm just me and my family are just their authentic self as well and oops <laughs> I'm sure that um, you guys will get to meet them as time progresses um, but yeah this is basically just what this channel is all about and in this channel I want to share our day-to-day -day homesteading uh, journey with you um, our victories, our failures, our challenges, um, our plans that we make and how we overcome obstacles. And um, at the end of the day, um, how it pays off for us as a family. Um, so I, I hope you enjoy taking this journey with us. Um, we are still in a small urban scale homestead or farmstead at this moment. And our goal is to, to grow to a point where we can really um, afford, you know, a bigger property um, and where we can upscale our operations. And yeah, basically we can, we will be able to do that, especially with um, your help and support um, by subscribing to this channel, liking the videos, sharing it with your friends and family, and yeah, also interacting with us. Um, like I said, there's a lot of things that I don't know, um, and this is a journal type of approach for me um, and sharing it with you. And hopefully you can give some constructive criticism as well. And I can learn from you guys as well. I'm sure there's a lot of people that is a lot more uh, skilled and able than what I am at this stage. And you've got a wealth of wisdom and knowledge that you can share, you know, with me, uh, with us in this journey. And um, yeah, I hope to make it as, 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 interactive as possible um, you know we want to grow community we want to to share our lives and build relationship and learn from each other and um, yeah at the end of the day um, you guys will also help me be accountable for the projects and things that I take on um, I mean at the end of the day, questions will be asked how did, how did this pan out, how did uh, that develop, and yeah, I'll own up to failures, and I'll share successes, um, and this is just one way, one way, one way um, to keep me committed and accountable um, to you as well. Um, and to our purpose. Um, so really, thank you for sharing this time with you. 
Um, the topic for today, chat topic, um, might be a bit of a, and I'm, I'm, and might be a bit of an uncomfortable, sorry, I'm an Afrikaner, so sometimes my tongue gets all twisted and tied up speaking English. Um, it's my second language, not my first language. Um, but I'm sure I'll be able to communicate what I need to, to you. Um, yeah, so the topic, <laughs> the topic for today um, might be uncomfortable for some people because I'm touching on mental health, uh, specifically depression and anxiety um, that we as homesteaders might experience. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. Yeah, so spring has finally sprung. Um, there's some blossoms on our potted fruit trees here. And hopefully this year we might get some fruit off them. Um, yeah. I've also got some seedlings in the ground, seedlings going there. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just amazing to see life coming back to the homestead. Um, you know, the lawn is starting to turn green and yeah, trees are starting to bud and blossom and everything seems to get ready for the new season. Um, and that is where we are as well. Today will be, um, we will start preparing for the new season in the garden. Um, and yeah, I really need to start being more professional. <laughs> and with, you know, the season is changing, everything is starting to bud and turn green, grow new leaves. And it's amazing to see new life coming from this dry state of death, basically, um, of winter. For us in the um, southern hemisphere, you know, it's turning spring, we're coming out of winter, um, everything is starting to green up and show life. Um, and it's exciting, you know that uh, it's time to to sow, um, knowing that when you put your uh, seed in the ground, um, it's going, you know, to produce your fruit and your harvest in a couple of uh, months. Um, but for our friends in the northern hemisphere, you you are moving from your harvest season into your colder months, uh, going to that state of death of winter. Um, we don't grow a lot of food and, and it's not a very productive time on a farmstead, um, you know, in the sense of growing. And although we are moving out of it now and into our growing season, um, I have to be honest, this winter was really hard on me. I'm actually surprised how deep I spiraled in, you know, uh, depression. No matter how hard I fought against it, uh, trying to see the positive in life as it is at that moment, it was, it was a very big, big struggle for me. I mean, I suffered from depression and, and anxiety for quite some time. And going into a season like winter, um, I like to prepare myself for that time. Um, I have some projects going uh, to keep myself busy, to keep me occupied. But even with that, it, it 
actually took a toll on me this winter season for some reason. Um, and it's difficult to explain, but I'm sharing with you where I'm at. As one of the winter projects, I actually try to uh, push, my push myself. You know, I had a project raising broiler chickens in the dead of winter, knowing that I'll have to, to commit a lot of time and care there to actually make sure that those chickens uh, make it through the winter season, especially here in South Africa, you know, with load shedding. Okay, load shedding for you that don't know is they cut out power, you know, for a couple of hours a day during nighttime as well. Um, so going to below freeze points here where we stay with broiler chickens, um, well, starting from day old, um, and you have power outages, planned power outages, you have to make a plan to, to let your chickens uh, survive that cold with our infrared lights and um, all of that without electricity. You know, it's, it's, it's a challenge. And I took that challenge on, uh, we raised a hundred broiler chickens. Um, it was exciting. I think I'll post a video on that at some point. But anyway, it was a challenge that I brought upon myself to keep myself occupied. Um, and that really did help me. And I'm proud to say our loss was uh, less than 10%. Um, so I'm quite happy with that result. Uh, we processed the chickens and we've got a freezer full of um, chickens for a year and I'm happy. Also, thanks to God, there was an opportunity where I could consult and work, help out at a, at a company, a local company here in uh, town over the winter months, uh, well, for about a month and a half, two months, um, which also kept me uh, busy and it generated some, some income. During the winter times um, on a farmstead, if you sell produce to your uh, uh, local community, obviously uh, winter time isn't a time where you sell a lot of fresh uh, pro produce. Um, so I was blessed by God in the sense that, you know, I had an opportunity to work off of the homestead for, for a time being and to generate income in that way. Um, although it was a fixed term contract and it's over and done with, it was a blessing. The point I'm trying to make, it's funny to me that even though I had plans made to keep myself occupied so I wouldn't overthink and spiral down into um, a depression, and although I had things going for me, um, the winter still took, it, took its toll on me for some, for some reason. To me, it's important to share that with you guys as well, especially my friends in the Northern Hemisphere going into um, your winter months now. I mean, at this stage, you guys are still busy harvesting and uh, preserving and keeping busy with all that stuff. Um, but there's the period of rest coming uh, when it's the dead of winter um, and not many things are going on. Um, and I think it's important for that time to plan ahead, um, to maybe focus on some maintenance around the, the homestead, sharpening your tools, oiling it, getting everything ready, um, storing it away, uh, maybe take on a project or two, uh, maybe you want to build, you want to expand your garden and need to build a couple of new raised bed gardens. So that's maybe an excellent project for the winter or um, rebuilding a, you know, your chicken coop to facilitate your 
a, a growing number of chickens or you know whatever the case might be um, get a brooder barn ready um, to uh, uh, brood your day old boilers you know many guys are ready for it but get a project or two <coughs> sorry or a couple of projects to keep you occupied um, I think the major thing for me is not feeling productive um, you know during that time of rest um, my wife still works off the homestead full-time um, and we are blessed with her earning a salary but it does take a toll on you staying at home and not having much to do while she's out working and earning a salary to you know to, to uh, provide for the house and as a man it takes a it really does take a toll because I'm one of those traditional men believing that a man should provide for his family um, and although we've discussed it plenty of times um, you know we we are comfortable in a sense um, but yeah deep down inside it does touch a nerve um, and that might be one of the triggers that you know uh, um, that I went through the, or that caused you know the bit of depression that I went uh, through um, I know that some of you both are fully 100% submerged and committed to your homestead um, and you're both at home during that time husband and wife and you take that time to rest and that's fine um, I think it's just a matter of fear or feeling uh, a matter of feeling productive and useful um, at the end of the day nevertheless I am happy that winter is over and I can get to the garden start preparing for the season um, and yeah get planting and get productive um, I, I'm so grateful winter is over you don't understand
Yeah, so just as life would have it, as I got ready to mow the lawn, well not really mow the lawn, you know, basically pick up the dead dry grass so that the cream can come through. Um, no cheating, no electricity. So I'll find something else to do. Okay, I know some of you might argue that um, leaving the dry grass as a mulch to feed the new grass coming up um, is a better option, and rightly so, it's true. Um, as for me, it's actually a bit more useful to pick up, you know, the loose grass, get the lawn nice and even and um, use, you know, the grass cuttings or dry grass in the compost pile for the chickens to compost. And um, yeah, and also seeing more green just makes me happy. Um, we don't use the grass basically for pasture. I'm in an urban setting, so we can't really keep livestock here and I don't have the space for it so if it was pasture maybe I would have agreed um, but yeah um, this is just lawn um, and having compost and happy chickens are basically more important to me now there's just Another couple of important things that I want to touch on, and that is seasons teach us great things. Um, as nature needs to go through seasons, sorry, there's something in my eye. As nature needs its seasons. To be fertile and productive. Um, the human journey, the human life, also has its seasons, and it's necessary to appreciate the different seasons of your life for that moment where you are at. Um, and although our thoughts and feelings might be influenced sometimes by the circumstances and seasons outside. Um, it is good to appreciate those thoughts and feelings. Um, but it's also necessary to understand that your thoughts and feelings aren't necessarily the reality. Um, the season that I went through during this winter is where I felt unuseful, unproductive, um, and basically not truly, truly like a financial contributor uh, to this household. Um, but the reality is that I still have a family that love and adore me and that I love and adore. Um, they still respect me. They still value me and I still have a contribution to give. Although it didn't feel like it, although I felt like a failure, um, failing to provide, um, there, 
there's other ways that I did provide, other ways that I did contribute to this household. And it's difficult to see when you're in that situation. Um, but like I said, don't let thoughts and feelings basically dictate your reality but take it as it is go through the season appreciate it it sounds weird um, to say appreciate the time that you feel depressed that you feel uh, what's a correct word that you don't contribute value um, Because during the times that you actually do, you appreciate it so much more. Uh, how can I explain it differently? It reminds me of a, of a beautiful quote that I read once. And it is, the quote is, do not judge your life by the harvest that you pick today or the harvest that you have today uh, but by the seed that you sow today because um, knowing every day although you don't see the produce immediately the seed that you sowed today uh, will dictate what harvest you have in the future but if we are so focused on and judge our lives on the harvest that we have today or uh, uh, what is a masseuse in English? Um, yeah, so if we judge our lives by the harvest we have today or the failed crops that we had, um, the missed harvest, um, you might get, get despondent. But knowing that there is all kinds of seed in life um, that you import to your family, um, the seed that you say, sow today is more important than the harvest that you reap today. Of course, the seed that you sow today will dictate what harvest you have in the future. Um, okay, so while we have um, load shedding while our power is off um, I'll start preparing you know tonight's meal that I will um, cook over an open fire the wife always love it a bit of uh, pork chop some roasted veg and rice okay rule one Clean up and be surface. I'm going to start with the ice. I'm going to be sharing using the same battery lights on the counters. Um, the health of my health is my favorite. I'm going to be sharing the health of my health. Okay, some pork chops. Unfortunately, um, this isn't pork that we raised ourselves, um, but we are one step closer. Um, stop. Nia. Yeah, like I said, um, although we didn't raise the pork ourselves, we are one step closer. Um, I'm actually in 
negotiations with a local farmer here uh, where I can get, well, local homesteader near. Um, yeah, where I can act a few works. Sorry, just need to give these cats up. Say hi. Three babies. Let's try again. So, although we didn't raise the spork ourselves, um, we are one step closer, taking it one step at a time. I'm in negotiation with another um, small scale farmer or homesteader. Um, to actually uh, purchase a, a pregnant uh, Colbrook saw from him. Um, now Colbrook is it's very similar to the Kuni Kuni. So yes, we are excited. I'm hoping that everything will go as planned. I believe she is, I think six weeks pregnant, he said. Um, yeah, so if she, if I get her and she uh, ferrous, um, then soon we might have some piglets on the on the homestead as well. Okay, I think it's important to note here that um, I did use store-bought veggies um, as our garden didn't, well, some things it did deliver quite good, um, other things didn't produce so well, um, but I'll, there's reasons for it, I'll do another video on that and discuss that. Um, so yeah, we ran out of uh, produce, so we had to buy some grocery stuff that we believe is healthy and good. Um, and that's why you see me using store-bought stuff as well.
No shame in that. Then lastly, I will prepare um, rice in chicken stock um, as our starch. Got the veggies prepped, got the meat prepped. I normally just put some rice first in the sieve so I can wash it. Um, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to use chicken cubes. Um, luckily it's growing season again and processing season. So hopefully one of these days the pantry will be stocked with some homemade uh, products. And onto the stove. Oops, there we go. I also would just like to encourage you through the Word of God um, that no matter what season you find yourself in, in your life, in your circumstances, and it's only appropriate now that we find the change in season um, and we can visually observe that, that we can attend to the change in seasons um, in our personal lives as well and find encouragement from that. Um, and I just want to read you a piece from Ecclesiastes uh, 3, which is very encouraging to me. To everything there is a season and a time for every matter or purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rent and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, and a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What profit remains for the worker from his toil? I have seen the painful labor and exertion and miserable business 
which God has given the sons of men, with, with which to exercise and busy themselves. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also planted eternity in men's hearts and minds, a divinely implanted sense of purpose working through the ages, which nothing under the sun but God alone can satisfy. Yet so that men cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for, for them than to be glad and to get and to do good as long as they live. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. Just knowing that in your season, there is a purpose. Uh, no matter what our circumstances is, um, there is purpose for it. We might not always like it, and sometimes it might be difficult to endure and to accept, but there's purpose behind it, and we need to trust God for that. And that season will pass. The time has been planned and specified and appointed by God, and it shall pass. The drought, the death of, of winter, eventually it will pass. And from that death, and that's the important point, from the death of winter comes new life. The fallen leaves feed the soil for new growth. And in our lives as well, the difficult times, the death, the seasons of death, the winter, the drought, the loneliness will be fertilizer, nourishment for our life in the future, for the new life that actually springs from that. I think God in his wisdom knows ultimately, obviously, what is best for us. In our times of testing and trials and tribulation and drought, feeling far from God, feeling removed from God, keep faith because God knows what he has planned for us. At the end of the day, you will enjoy the fruits of the labor because it is God's gift to us. <laughs> yeah, yes. Hello, Kras. Hello, my skin. Hello, Kosti. <laughs> Yeah, and that's the compost pile that these guys are working on. Uh, just for interest's sake, I've got a couple of Brahmas. Um, unfortunately, I, I don't have any hens left. I sold all the hens. Um, then I've got 
the Plymouth Rock, my mind, cock, and um, five little chicks. And then these are some of the broilers that we raised. Um, and my wife decided to keep the hens. Sorry, those two are also babies from the uh, Plymouth Mama. Broilers, uh, my wife decided to keep a couple of hens as an experiment to try and breed them with the Brahmas.